Good morning. Welcome to the uh, Board of Franklin County Commissioners meeting for Wednesday, October 3rd. I appreciate your attendance this morning. As Commissioner Howard remarked, it's nice to see this many here and uh, apparently not with an axe to grind. So we appreciate that very much. Roll call, please. Commissioner Howard. Present. Commissioner Waymire. Present. Chair Renaud. Present. Vice Chair Oglesby. Present. Commissioner Dunn. Present. All right, if you would, please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance followed by our invocation. Father God, once again, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today. And Lord God, you are our great protector. We ask for your protection upon all the law enforcement, upon the fire department, upon the EMTs, Lord God. We know you protect us. We never know when we leave our house, Lord, where we're gonna go back to our house tonight. But Lord, you do look, watch over us and, and protect us. And we thank you for that. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you all. Yeah, thank you, thank you very you. much, Leonard. Leonard. Okay, um, next we're going to go to correspondence and organizational business, and we're going to begin with the uh, Conservation District and invite a spokesperson for them, if they would, please. I didn't realize I was going to get to do this in front of everybody today. Yes. So we just wanted to come in and provide a mid-year update. Um, in early September, the commissioners should have received an email from me on behalf of the district board with our 2019 annual work plan attached to it. The annual work plan sets forth the goals and objectives for local programming to assist in the conservation of and education regarding the natural resources of Franklin County. So hopefully you've had a chance to look over that. And if you have any questions, please contact me about that. One area of the annual work plan is to provide informational and educational programs to youth and adults throughout Franklin County to assist with outreach efforts. And the supervisors decided to include the action of providing quarterly updates to the commissioners and a monthly email following our monthly board meetings. So you will start receiving those um, as early as tomorrow because we do have our monthly meeting tomorrow. To start off the update of our cost share program, the conservation district is the local source for funding for the installation of best management practices or BMPs. We administer multiple cost share assistance and incentive-based programs which provide economic and environmental benefits direct to Franklin County and all residents. Since January 1st of 2018, the Conservation District has administered $25,748 in payments direct to Franklin County landowners who have completed BMPs. 13 local contractors were hired to complete the BMP work, which included one livestock water supply project, 25 acres of brush clearing for pasture enhancement, nearly 5,000 linear feet of interior cross fence for rotational grazing, 40 acres of range and forage seeding, 3,800 linear feet of terraces and underground tile outlet terraces, and a one acre grass waterway. The actual value of the BMPs that were paid on since January 1st was $48,074. That money went to local contractors. Included in the BMP payments was also funding for 147 soil tests. We partner with Kansas State University and the Franklin County Extension Office to provide, to collect and analyze the soil tests and the Conservation District funds up to 10 tests per landowner at a reduced rate. For State Fiscal Year 20, we hope to include incentive payments for grid sampling, which will provide more precise sampling and application systems. On July 2nd, the Conservation District was awarded $29,294 through the Kansas Water Plan Fund to administer to Franklin County landowners to implement BMPs for state fiscal year 19. All $29,000 was allocated during our January 5th board meeting to implement approximately $70,000 of on the ground conservation work. The Conservation District has been busy assisting landowners with agriculture uh, compliance with the USDA farm programs. Conservation district, excuse me, conservation compliance has direct correlation 
to the federal farm program benefits and crop insurance benefits, which, which this year have been very important to the farmers. The Conservation District provides technical assistance to producers when they come in to inquire about updating their farm plan. Since January 1st, we have helped complete 16 official HEL, which is highly erodible land, and non-HEL determinations, which are required for conservation compliance. The Conservation District Board of Supervisors review all conservation compliance plans at their monthly board meetings, and since January, we've approved nine conservation compliance plans, six conservation reserve program plans, nine environmental quality incentive program plans, and 23 emergency haying and grazing plans, which allowed local producers to use their CRP acres due to the extreme drought conditions this summer. The six CRP plans will bring payments totaling $1,800 to five Franklin County landowners, and the nine EQIP plans will bring payments totaling $87,000 to the nine Franklin County landowners. The projects will focus on soil health, water quality, two high tunnels, and also the Monarch Initiative. I mentioned 23 plans that were approved for the emergency haying and grazing of CRP. Franklin County has been in a drought status of varying degrees since November 28th of 2017. That was 310 days ago. We officially reached the D3 or extreme drought status on July 17th, and even today we remain in the D2 severe drought status. Due to these drought conditions, the Kansas Department of Agriculture announced the availability of funds to be implemented directly through county conservation districts for the emergency livestock water supply initiative on July 31st. On August 13th, they went back and approved an additional 22 counties, including Franklin, for the initiative. This allows us to advertise funding to local producers who had installed livestock water supply projects to maintain water, adequate water for their livestock during this drought. KDA received 174 applications and they were able to award $322,229 to county conservation districts just last week through the initiative for all 174 applications. The applications that I received here in Franklin County were all approved and those landowners have been notified. While it's not the sole purpose of the conservation district, many customers greatly benefit from the availability of our no-till drill that we rent out. Even with the extreme drought conditions this year, we have rented the drill to 27 customers who have seeded 326 acres since January 1st. Interesting to note that we have rented it to the City of Ottawa, the City of Pomona, Ottawa Co-op, and Dotson International, as well as individual landowners. We have sold just over $8,000 worth of grass seed, forb mixes, food plot mixes, and cover crops already this year, and we continue to partner with the Community Butterfly Project to promote pollinator habitat and butterfly gardens. This spring, we sold about five pounds worth of pollinator seed, which is enough to establish about one acre of pollinator habitat here in the county. Those five pounds, we generated a little extra funding and made a $40 donation to the Butterfly Mural Project. Lastly, I would like to highlight some of our public information and education projects. Conservation districts across Kansas don't just target our education efforts to school-aged students. Soil health, cover crops, grazing management workshops for local farmers and ranchers are common conservation district supported events. In 2017, only about 25% of our local information and education budget was directly related to K through seven education programming. The other 75% were related to programs and services we offer for adults. Already this year, we have provided routine public information and education through our website and Facebook page conservation newsletters, and we've begun working with KOFO to talk conservation on a quarterly basis. We entered into an agreement with the Miami County Conservation District to provide communication services for the promotion of the Hillsdale Watershed Coalition. And in August, I was asked to give a presentation to the Kansas Water Authority to showcase the prioritized, productive, and successful programs that conservation districts offer in all 105 counties. We are currently offering first-time attendees scholarships to the No-Till on the Plains Conference and general scholarships for the Kansas Environmental Education Conference. We are promoting an upcoming quail habitat management workshop with our partners at Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks and Tourism and the Old World Blue Stem Field Day, which is coming up on Monday. 
I do have a copy of that with the press release in case you're unaware of how important it is to um, identify and maintain that old or get rid of that old world blue stem. Discussion is underway about a soil health workshop and a women in ag event here in Ottawa and 2019 will be the next ag stewardship event which we partner with three other counties and is held in Overbrook. We're waiting on the release of the next farm bill to set the agenda for that event. Like I said, I do have copies of the Old World Blue Stem Flyer and the press release talking about how important it is to uh, eradicate that blue stem if possible. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I do have a question on the, the money that was handed out for the drought situation. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to some people and I know of some that had good rain and were really not a problem for them. But they told me that being any part of the county was dry and was able to get this, everybody in the county could get it. Correct. This doesn't make sense to me that, that it's not just checked out for the ones that actually need it, but anybody can get it because one part of the county is getting it. And the way that works is the U.S. Drought Monitor, which partially relies on the Cocoa Raws rain reporting that anybody can sign up to do it's through the U.S. Um, weather and USDA, there's several different entities that, that collaborate to create that drought monitor map. But basically the way it worked, especially with um, the CRP, emergency haying and grazing, as soon as any portion of the county hit that D3 status, it allowed the federal farm service agency to make haying and grazing of CRP throughout the county available. It also made the livestock forage payments available where you could get paid on a per head or per acre basis and that's just the way the program is set up instead of trying to draw a definite line of where that D3 versus the D2 difference was once any portion of the county hits it then it makes the entire county eligible. I mean I realize it would be pretty tough to go out and have to individually go out and check 174 to see if they really need it or not. Right. It just we did on that on the state emergency water supply project it was retroactive funding which is rare i think this is the second time in my 18 years that they've done it that way the last time was the drought of 12. normally you always have to have a contract in place before you start any work but this was retroactive funding we only had six producers come into the office to ask about it and only four actually made an application here in franklin county I know if you went over to Morris County, I think they had 75 applications. They had a bunch of people that drilled wells, and so the state was able to help pay for that. Um, so fortunately, we weren't that bad as far as the water for the livestock, but it was something that we were eligible for. Okay. What's the matter with old world blue stem? <laughs> so old world blue stem, I have a few notes here. Um, it's economically damaging because it will take over the native grass pastures. It's not nutritional for cattle and they do not find it palatable. So it's left and will take over and invade. It actually releases a toxin to where other grasses won't grow next to it. And so um, they are concerned that it will be worse than Cerisa lespedeza. There is a field day down uh, by Olivet and it's a large pasture that unfortunately the old world blue stem has taken over. The, the treatment right now basically is Roundup and so he's, he's been spraying, he's going to go in and work it and spray it and have to plant it back to soybeans which would be Roundup ready so he can continue to put that chemical on because that seed can sit and it will just invade and take over. And so there, the uh, Kansas Department of Agriculture knows that 102 counties have old world blue stem and they're pretty sure that the other three also have it they just don't want to admit to it and uh it's it's the next concern like i said it cerisa lespedeza is next to impossible to get rid of um we all the years haven't found a good guaranteed way to get that out of your pastures and they're really indicating that this old world blue stem could be even worse than that so and i know nrcs was just out here in ottawa two days ago and found some here within the city limits of Ottawa. So I know we have it in Franklin County out in pastures as well. So if you'd like a copy, I've got the, the press release. Osage County is the one that are hosting it, but certainly all the counties around are helping promote it. Well, I'd like to know what it looks like. It looks a lot like regular blue stem. Yeah, and I've got some better pictures too, Roy. Okay. If you'd like, or we can, if you think you might have it, we can sure uh, come out and take a look for you.
We'll take one. Thank you. Thank you for the time, and congratulations to all the employees on their service awards. Uh, before you go, Carrie, I know some of your uh, people are here. Would you like to have them stand so we can just see maybe who's here with the Conservation District? Uh, uh, Chairman Doug Smith from Williamsburg. Okay. All right. And a few of our customers are here, sure. too. Well, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Okay. Next, uh, we'd like to hear a report from Vance Brothers. There. Oh. Here we go. Okay. morning Good morning I'm Perry Dummett with uh, Vance Brothers okay uh, I know that the commissioners have had some questions but uh, maybe you could pr give us at least an update on where we are now with the uh, ongoing uh, overlay we're doing uh, we should uh, we got four miles left to do and we should finish that up today uh, fairly easily um, I think the questions were um, about the length of it and and the delays in sure. it and uh, obviously it was um, you know, due to uh, the Haydite, which is a purchased uh, aggregate that we're using, it's a lightweight <laughs> aggregate, and it's um, it's a manufactured product, and it's it's lightweight, and it, its advantages is obviously is when you know when you lay the material before the day you do it, before you can sweep it, you know, cars can fling some of it around, and the lightweight the nature of it doesn't damage anything. It's it's not like regular aggregates, um, and so I understand about the 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 attractiveness of the material and KDOT uses it um, all over the state and surrounding states too. The problem is um, the manufacturer of it uh, had two plants and several years ago closed one of them at, down in Marquette, Kansas. Their current plant is in New Market, Missouri and the demand for their product is extremely high. Um, between the state, uh, MoDOT, and KDOT jobs, it's uh, difficult to get in the amount in the time that we would like. It was pretty expensive for us, too, to come in and out of here three times to mobilize all the equipment, you know, because we would just uh, wait till they could stockpile the material up enough for us to do at least, you know, five or six, you know, a few days worth of work, you know, make it worth our while to come down. And, um, and then we'd have to move out and go do other work and wait for it to stockpile up again. So when you started your project this year, you knew you didn't have enough product on hand to finish it? We knew, um, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is when we bid the job, you know, we get a commitment from somebody and it just doesn't work out that way. Right. Um, I started, uh, I can't remember what uh, month the job was bid in. I know I started getting material on um, bef in early April and it took all year to get the planned quantities, which wasn't quite enough anyway. It seemed like before the one this problem occurred, uh, it was that you weren't going to start until you had it enough, and that's why I wondered if we had enough area to stockpile it or if just miscalculate the amount of material or... No, it's just so, just getting it in. I mean, I, I, uh, to wait till the entire job was uh, stockpiled to get started would not work, and we knew that, so we did take out on our uh, expenses of having to move in here several times and just uh, just you know do seven eight miles at a time you know just what it stockpiled up and we'd run it out and we, they'd start again you know and now the good news is um, that a supplier has been bought out by a much bigger outfit and they're wanting to talk with us um, you know here coming up maybe in the next week or two about you know the Franklin job and other you know other um, projects that they have to fill that you know we do a lot of work with them on other um, chip seal projects uh, throughout the Missouri and Kansas so uh, you know I think that can be improved um, you know of course if you guys want to just extend the contract right now I can start stockpiling it right now but uh, I'm sure you'll have to go through a few more steps to well kind of where this goes back like five years ago when we did Highway 50 we had a lot of issues um, it was very cold when they finally got to doing Highway 50. Um, it didn't really set good. There was a lot of people complaining, chip windows and so forth. We were using the other material. So we got together and said, we need to get this on the agenda earlier and get this to you early so yeah, this doesn't happen to helped. us again. So we did that and thought we had that solved. And then last year we got in the same situation. You ran out and we got later. Now we're in October and we're just getting done because the same situations happened to us again. 
like you said, I think this material is better even this time of year than what the other stuff we used. But one of the other problems that we kind of had is the company that we used to put the lines on the road after you're done is out in Nebraska. So they really don't want to come and do a small section and then come back again either. And we've had a road set now with this material, which is hard to drive on when it's at night for a lot of people with no lines on it. So we've had this highway setting for a long time that hasn't been lined and happens to be my district. And I've heard numerous uh, complaints about when they get the lines on this thing, it's dangerous, it's hard to drive on. And we keep saying, well, as soon as the company comes back and finishes, then our others will be here to finish. So that's been kind of a, a touch. How many years there. in a row now have we used vans? I think five, I think, that I know of. I think much of the frustration on our end comes that we've done what we can to be good customers. We understand that this material is hard to get to and that it's elongated the process. So we started much earlier in the year. Knowing that we wanted the work done, completed two, three months earlier, we began our process two, three months earlier, yet still we find ourselves last in line. Wonder, do the job you pulled off to go do <clears throat> somewhere else use the same cover material? Um, none of the ones I was in charge of. Um, our company has several jobs from in KDOT and uh, ODOT land that, that have it, and we're just at the you know mercy of what's doled out to us. Um, the other, the only other uh, solutions is a different type of aggregates locally, or from a lightweight standpoint, you know, coming from Colorado or Texas, you know, which would be a pretty big, huge expense extra. I, I'm not Did sure. Did we notify or did anybody, any representative from your company let us know about alternatives to help accomplish our objective? Yeah, we, me and Jim have talked about that before. There's, you know, you do have, a, you know, you have a limestone um, uh, portion of the bid too, uh, you know, there's knowing two. that we're interested in the lightweight cover material. Excuse me? Knowing that we're interested in the lightweight cover material. You say there's alternative? No, not for the lightweight. Uh, here in the Midwest, we're at the, just, we're, uh, we're at the mercy of Buildex. One of the things that I thought might be part of a solution would be if, and, and this may be more work on your part, I don't know, but whenever we give you the list of the miles that we're going to do, if we did those that are going to get marked striping, do that group first or at least at one time while the product is here because some of the roads we get are not marked so therefore uh i, I don't know about moving machinery back and forth from part of the county that may be part, certainly deal with that that's not that's I, and not that would help a lot i would think that way we wouldn't be waiting to put striping down for for three months on some some of the higher traffic roads well i do think that you know meeting with summit the summit group which has bought um that manufacturer out and it's like i said it's very big outfit, and they want to talk with us. So obviously, we're uh, this job is is uh, is a very nice size and very attractive for any any manufacturer. And I don't think it's so much that we only they only want to take care of certain individuals, and Franklin County comes last. I think they're just doing it to everybody and just trying to keep everybody happy. And everybody was delayed, so we had several of our other jobs that use the same type of material were in the same situation. They just weren't quite as big. And that's my question. Can you tell me what cities and counties that you're currently dealing with to provide chip and seal with this material? Um, I'd have to get you a list. They're just they're, they're K dot jobs. List. Like I said, I, I, uh, Sean Bross is uh, one of my peers. He takes care of most of those jobs. But I can certainly get that to, to Jim. Is is there a number? You're saying there's a number of these cities and counties then that didn't get their material, and they they were going through the same process of a little here and a little there. That's what, for what I understand, from what Sean has explained to me. But I will say that KDOT usually lets their jobs about this time of the year for next year, and we start stockpiling. Um, you know as soon as we can. The problem is with the lightweight material, it's the, the concrete users. I, you know, whether the manufacturer buckles to pressure from whomever, um, that material is still a very vi viable um, uh, component of, of lightweight contracts for up in the air for structural. And is this the same material that the city of Ottawa used? No. They used a different material. That's correct. They used a 3-8 trap rock, which is readily available. 
but it's on the high roads that have higher speeds, you know, we're talking about, you know, people, cars, you know, with windshields and things like that. That's, that's certainly an issue and a problem. But is that become more of a problem if you do it later in the year where you have less of a chance of compacting that into the oil? Like if you do it early on when it's warm, yeah, the, a greater chance of that material being worked in like it's supposed to and versus and being loose. And sweep the roads. Yeah. Um, well, just I think the KDOT requirement, most all, you know, uh, specs for chip seal, you know, ask for, you know, 60 degrees and rising, you know, and, and you know, uh, it's, you know, this time of year, I mean, it hadn't affected what we're doing. And you mentioned something in the past. I, I understand that. And that was, um, that was several years back. But it's, once again, you know, a commitment from somebody is a commitment, but we can't, I, okay. you know, I, like I said, I, I know, I'm sure there's alternatives and other ways to avoid this, but until somebody starts making some more of that stuff and somebody, you know, can actually keep to a schedule. I think the benefits that drove us to the lightweight were the uh, passive solar, the friction. Sure. And then uh, it's a great product. cleaner material. Yeah. So, it sounds like, I mean, trap rock would accomplish a lot of that, too. It does. It's a very clean material. It's very hard and, and, would, and wears as tough as anything there is out there. I highly recommend it. But in a two-lane road, when people are going 65, 70 miles an hour past each other, it's until you can get it swept off, it can cause some, some problems. And like I said, the, the lightweight material, as I understand why it's been chosen, it's a, it's a great product. And that's why everybody is trying to get their hands on it. And like I said, it's not just the road people, it's the concrete people that get the lion's share of it. Could you work with uh, our staff and give us some alternative, I guess, for the future? Yeah, sure. There's uh, plenty of things out there, Jim. We've known about that. And in, in terms of uh, how, what order roads are due to accomplish that, that's, that's not a problem at all, ever. Maybe they costs <laughs> associated with it. So. Mm -hmm. And like I said, uh, you know, the coming in and out, we, we didn't count on it either. You know, and it's pretty expensive to, to move that much equipment, that many people in and out. And, um, but, you, you know, we had a commitment to, for the contract to get it done and get it done on time and get it done in a, in a timely <laughs> manner. Um, but, and that's ultimately our responsibility, whether the supplier does it, you know, can make it or not. So um, we're going to ask the right questions, and we're going to see, you know, we'll make the, maybe the new owners a little more cognizant of, of what I had, what well, might have to answer some questions today, and I have other, other things to do. I'm sure you guys other have other business you'd like to, yeah. to get to too. To have to and stop to talk about. Considering other materials, would be right, and that's why we're we're definitely going to tell them that. So, would it be advantageous if we uh, let the bids out a lot earlier? Yes, absolutely, as early as possible. Like I said, KDOT's doing it now, and Missouri's doing it now uh, for next year, for 2019, um, for the same reasons. They, they just kept getting it's, it's always been about the same time as Franklin you know early in the in the in the you know January February just like it's always been you know over the last year two years really they've been pushing them back into the fall to to try to stockpile for any of their hate requirements okay questions appreciate right. thank you yeah. thank, thank you very you. much for your time okay we're going to move on down then to public comment uh, we have some Janet. Mm -hmm. Jean Hart. Jean. Jean Hart, 219 West 4th Street in Linden, Kansas. Okay. I'm glad to see the number of people that are here today, but I'm sure it's all for, for all the service awards and all that, and that's great to see. I really think that's great to see this place build, and I would hope that that would continue. Now, <clears throat> first, since everybody is here, and I know what's happened in the last day or so, and what happened to Ralph Ferguson. I have to say a few words there before the man, and I know a lot of people knew him. I know the family, and uh, what a service this man had done, because it showed from at the funeral home as well as for the funeral yesterday. 
And so I think everybody, I hope, will remember him in, in your prayers. And uh, it's a sad deal the way it happened. And so I wanted to make that comment that I knew him. And you know, always, he was always an icon at the state fair, at the fair here in Franklin County at the hog barn. Many, 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 many years. So that's the first thing I wanted to state. <clears throat> the second one is, is <clears throat> since this gentleman was up here talking to you about the roads, when is old 50 going to get marked? Why didn't you ask him? When is old 50 going to get marked on the markings? Because there's a lot of people here today that come from that direction. And it's still not marked. And yes, we are in October. Thank God it's still hot yet. But when is it going to get marked? Because I've drove that for many, many years. And I had told the commissioners here many, many years, why don't you get this process started quicker? And you just, just brought that up, Don did, or Mr. Dunn, and I promoted this years ago to start early, and I don't know why you don't do it now. This ought to be a sign of getting that taken care of, for sure, because it's not right. Because driving on 050 at night, especially in the winter and it ain't marked, it is a hazard, very much so, okay? Now... The next thing is, and I know that this is going to be a little bit concerned, maybe, maybe just some people or what, but it is to me. Right now, uh, seen in the paper last Thursday, I wasn't here last, last week, that uh, Larry Rawrod put in the classified ads in the back for two more new members for to be put on the planning board as well as for the zoning, for one. In this statement, and I've never seen it before, never. 21 years old? It's not on the website. It's not saying there when people uh, reply for this job or whatever, it has to be 21. And you take a look at what the governorship had for this year, 18-year-olds running. There's nothing wrong with an 18-year-old being on a planning commission. No, because especially if they lived on a farm all their life, and they also know the rules and regulations that are out there in our county. But it's not on the website that you have to be 21. So... And with that in mind, I think that the issue of nine members, you know, in the past, <clears throat> when the openings were arose, that there would be a number of people apply, and if they was too many come from a certain part of the county, like three or four, that they would refuse them because they couldn't allow that many people from that particular part of the district to be on there. Right now, you got three from one area right now on the planning. And what it should be is, as I promoted, tried to promote years ago, 10 and allow two from each one of your districts to be on there to keep it segregated out around. But see, it doesn't say that on the website, that it has to be segregated that way either. All it has to do is that they live in Franklin County and anybody else, and you know these people do not get paid for being on the planning commission like you guys get paid where you sit. And you have to make the decision on who, who you choose to be on that planning board. So, what I'm saying is, be fair, because I already know one individual that has given his letter long before and was not announced last month or last week, 
that he had applied, and in the website it states it has to be done in the month of September. Now it won't go until the end of October to bring these before, and then you won't be able to make a decision till the first week in November. So I ask fairness to who applies, and hopefully the positions will be fared for the good welfare of this county. Thank you. Terry Walford. Terry. <clears throat> Terry Wolford, 3962 Reno Road. I just want to tell you the Ottawa Co op Lay Loop Exchange is back open and the truck traffic and the dust is, and I know it's a dry year, terrible. And I just want to make you guys know there's a problem out there so you can do something. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Terry. Okay, we're going to move next to uh, the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda uh, conclude uh, the meeting minutes for September 26th, the minutes from the study station on October 1, payroll for the pay period of August 21 through September 20 in the amount of $1,180,963.01, and also claim vouchers in the amount of $1,031,000. $335.16. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Renaud? Yes. Okay, and, and I appreciate our staff to be recognized for waiting around. We get through this so that we can uh, give you ample time to get recognized. So we'll go next to our first item of business, uh, Midge, and uh, the WIC contract dated October 1. Good morning, Commissioners. This is our standard annual contract with the State of Kansas for WIC services providing <coughs> nutritional supplements and education to uh, very young children and pregnant women. Um, we are requesting from the state uh, a little over $86,000 this year. We don't quite meet that each year, but gives us enough to get, get through and include salary for personnel, et cetera. Um, the only new to this contract is standard across Kansas contracts this year is the harassment policy for the state. Um, and the whistleblower protections have been added to this contract, which you've seen in other contracts as well, I'm sure. So um, if there is no, if there are no questions, I'd ask for approval of this contract. Derek, you've been able to review it. Have. make a motion to approve the WIC contract dated October 1, 2018 through September 30, 2019. Second. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair Renaud? Yes. Thank you very much. I right, thank you, Midge. Okay, now let's proceed then to let's, recognition. Let's staff report and the and shut the okay. Uh, staff reports if you guys are really scattered back here and hard to see. If any of the staff have a report you'd like to make, uh, Derek, do you have anything? I don't. Jim? Je okay. Uh, commissioner reports? Nope. Rick? Um, Williamsburg attempted to have a city meeting Monday night, was unable to get a quorum. I think uh, some of their members are on the fire department were involved in that funeral. They didn't have a quorum for Monday night, so they're going to have to reschedule it. And I have not been to anything else. But... Okay. Cool. I don't have a report, only a statement that I, I know that there are a number of first responders and deputies here in the chambers this morning. And with the events that have taken place this week, I want to reach out to you and tell you how important your job is and that I fully understand that you get to see things and experience things that are hard to take out of your mind, hard to forget, and how much I appreciate your service to the county. I know it's a difficult job, and I want you to know that it is uh, very much appreciated what you do for us. Good comment. Roy? Uh, Monday night, I went to the Farm Bureau Legislative Tour down at Richmond, Kansas. The uh, 
quality systems structure uh, facility down there, and it's a great economic uh, asset to Franklin County, all the, the uh, products they make and the uh, workforce they have. It's great for the city of Richmond, and, and like I said, the, the county too. They uh, do structures, and they said they got contracts out through uh, March of 2019, so they're they're doing a good job. Okay. Uh, yesterday morning, uh, Derek and I attended the FCDC executive board meeting. Um, I, from the reports that we received, uh, not only Proximity Park, but a lot of areas of Franklin County are being promoted, and there's some interest in uh, different companies coming to uh, Franklin County. They've certainly looked at that. Uh, from the report we got from QSI, the, the main problem that they face and a lot of us are facing is quality uh, employees, finding people who will work and be reliable, and uh, that is uh, it's going to be an ongoing challenge as these businesses want to locate to Franklin County and have enough of that. Also, the FCDC is uh, getting ready to have a um, strategic plan event, probably be in November, uh, end of October, 1st of November and also uh, having an audit of their books taking place. So I think that's pretty much it for that. So with that in mind then, uh, let's go to our recognition. Okay.
the box. What's in the box is a hand-tooled leather belt that's personalized. I will. I will. It gets back in three weeks. Let's just stay.
first one is Bobby Davis. Make the motion. Okay. Hi. Hi. Let's celebrate. Yes, please help join in recognizing the people and celebrating their uh, service. <laughs> 